In lecture 29, we are going to take our new coordinate system called the polar coordinate system and look at graphs of equations that are given in terms of r and theta of those polar coordinates. We're going to be able to identify and graph some polar equations by first converting them to rectangular equations. And in cases where that uh, doesn't make sense, which is most cases, we also want to be able to graph those polar equations by plotting points and then uh, using some technology. And instead of uh, adopting a specific calculator for this course, although you may have a calculator that you can use to graph these alongside this lecture, what, uh, what I'm going to do is walk you through doing these graphs on a free resource online called Wolfram Alpha. And we'll be able to graph our polar coordinates on that particular website. All right, so let's start with the simple case of converting our uh, rectangular, or, or sorry, our polar equations into rectangular equations to see what the graphs looks like. So in this first example, we're given r is equal to 3. There are actually a couple of ways to handle graphing this. The first one is kind of the intuitive idea of what does r mean. If you're talking about polar coordinates, remember r is the distance from the origin. So what is the set of all points whose distance from the origin is 3? The answer is it's a circle that if you go out three in each direction, you end up with this circle. But that's the intuitive approach to graphing this. And certainly, very few of the polar equations we'll deal with are as simple as that. You can also convert it first. Remember that the way that we convert from polar to rectangular is to use one of our four reference equations. Um, X equals R cosine theta, Y is equal to R sine theta, um, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and tangent of theta is y over x. Since the only thing we have in there is an r, the one that makes the most sense to use is this one, except that I don't have an r squared, I only have an r. And while in one of the examples in the previous lecture I multiplied both sides by r to get an r squared in there, that actually is not the best solution here because that would leave me with a stranded r if I were to multiply both sides by r. But if I do square both sides in this case, I get r squared is equal to 9. Now all I have is an r squared to replace, and I can replace it with x squared plus y squared. And so I have an equation in rectangular coordinates. And hopefully you'll recognize that equation as being a circle centered at the origin with radius. Now, the right-hand side of a, of a circle is r squared, so the radius is 3, which is exactly the equation that I just graphed. Similarly, we can use um, intuition to graph this next equation. It tells us that theta is equal to pi over 4. So thinking of that as an equation is what are the set of all points in the polar coordinate system whose theta is pi over 4? That is, for any given possible r, theta is always pi over 4. Now where is pi over 4 as an angle? Pi over 4 is this 45 degree angle right here. Right? And the reason I drew it in both directions is that r could be positive, which means it could be anything along this direction. For any given r, it could go out this way. But I could also have a negative r, which would go out this direction. So my claim is, in the polar coordinate system, if theta is a fixed value, pi over 4, then the line or the equation for that, uh, sorry, the, the, the line of the graph for that equation is this straight line here. You can also get there by first converting this thing into uh, polar, or sorry, rectangular form. Remember our formulas from up above here. The only equation that only had thetas in it instead of r and theta was the second one. So to get a tangent in there, I'm just going to take the tangent of both sides. This leaves me with tangent of theta is equal to tangent of pi over 4, which I happen to know tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Right? Tangent of theta, on the other hand, by my formula above, is y over x. And if I just multiply the x to the other side, y is equal to x. There is my equation in rectangular form. Now, what does this equation look like? 
this is a line with slope 0 and y-intercept, not slope 0, slope 1 and y-intercept 0, which is exactly this line that I just drew up here. So that's the graph. Unlike the first two examples, there is really no intuition here that tells you what this um, graph is going to look like, other than to first convert it into a rectangular coordinate system. Recall, y is equal to r sine of theta, one of our reference formulas for converting between the coordinate systems. So this equation now becomes y is equal to 2. So in order to graph this, all we got to do is remember how do we graph y is equal to 2. So in the rectangular coordinate system, what does y equal 2 looks like? Well, it's every point that has a y coordinate of 2, which makes it, and I'll draw it in red just so we can distinguish it from the x-axis, there is y equals 2. In many cases, it's going to be difficult to convert to a rectangular equation or rectangular coordinate um, system from a polar coordinate system when dealing with equations. It's not always possible. Um, and in many cases, um, the rectangular coordinate system can't produce the same kind of interesting graphs that the polar coordinate system can. This is an example of one of those cases where instead of trying to convert, the best thing we can do is just to plot this thing with a table of values. In the same way that you would use a t-chart to graph an equation in x and y, you can do that in r and theta. So the way that I do this is we start with a table of values, and since this is r as a function of theta, we're going to treat theta as our independent variable. We're going to pick values for theta and find what the r is that goes with it. And then we're going to plot all of these points as r comma theta on the polar coordinate system. Okay, so there's my polar coordinate system. So let's, let's just pick a range of thetas that makes sense. Since sine of theta is periodic and will repeat itself every 2 pi, let's go from 0 to 2 pi, picking some interesting points along the way. Let's do 0. Um, how about uh, pi over 4? pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and pi. Now why are those interesting? Because those are these angles right here. We want to see what happens to the radius as we trace out those angles. So what is r at each of those given um, angles? And then just keep going all the way around. Let's do uh, 5 pi over 4, which is this angle here. Let's go straight down, which is 3 pi over 2. And let's go over here, which is 7 pi over 4. And over here, which is back to 2 pi. So if I plug in 0, I will get r is equal to 1 minus sine of 0, which is 1. So again, I'm plotting r comma theta, so I'm going out a distance of 1 in my positive r direction, which in this case is, is the direction is 0, so right here is my first point, right? If that's 2, 3, 4, and so on. Okay, next, pi over 4. If I plug in pi over 4, I get r is equal to 1 minus the square root of 2 over 2, right? So that's, um, and I plug that into my calculator, by the way, I'm going to get like a zero, approximately a 0 0.3. So if I go out, here's 1, right? 0.3 is about right here. Okay? So 0 0.3. Now if I do pi over 2, r is 1 minus sine of pi over 2, which actually is 1 minus 0, which gives me, sorry, 1 minus 1, which gives me 0. So straight up, I'm back at the origin. So here's what my curve has done so far. It has moved in to here, like that as we move around. Okay. Again, think of this thing. It's kind of hard to illustrate this. This is being swept out as we move around this circle 
what happens to the distance that you are away from the origin. If I do 3 pi over 4, I get r equals 1 minus sine of 3 pi over 4, which is 1 minus square root of 2 over 2 again, because it's still positive, and I get 0 0.3 again. So I'm back out, if this is 1, I'm back out to about here, so I'm coming back out this way. Whenever I do pi, I get r is equal to 1 minus sine of pi. Sine of pi is 0, which gives me a 1, so I'm back out to this distance here. If I go to 5 pi over 4, that's actually a negative square root of 2 over 2, so that becomes 1 plus square root of 2 over 2, which is approximately 1.7. So in this direction down here, which is 5 pi over 4, if this is a distance 1 and this is a distance 2, I'm actually about right here. And if I do 3 pi over 2, remember the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, so this becomes 1 minus a minus 1, which is 1 plus 1, or 2. So I end up at a distance of 2 from the origin. And 7 pi over 4 is going to actually be the same thing as 5 pi over 4, so I get a 1 plus 7 here. So I'm back in a little bit from 2. And then when I come back around to 2 pi, I'm going to get the same thing that I got with 0, which is 1, because sine of 2 pi is 0. That's 1 minus 0, which is 1. So as I move around this way, it kind of went further out till I hit 2 and then came back in as I come back to the center. This is actually called a cardioid shape because it's actually a heart shape. I missed that line just a little bit there, but that's the shape that you end up with. So you can do this by points and you can see how tedious that gets. All you're really doing is plotting the value of the function at each theta just determine what r is going to be. Now on this problem I'm going to cheat just a little bit. I'm going to cheat by having gone out on the web and uh, did a search for polar grid and then copy and pasted this picture right here into my notes so that you can use it as a or that we can use it, I can use it as I'm recording this to draw a little bit more accurate graph. Um, those things are easy to find online, so if you want some polar grid paper, just do a, a Google search or Bing search for um, for polar grid paper, and you will find what you're looking for, and can print those off and use them as you graph these things by hand. Now, graph this equation. We're going to do the same thing we did before, and we're going to we're going to pick a values of theta, plug it in, and find out what our r is, and then plot r comma theta. So let's, and we could do every single one of these angles if we wanted to, to figure out what the actual distance is. I'm going to do the same ones we did. Actually, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do, let's see, what do I want to do? Let's do the pi over 3 family this time. Instead of doing the pi over 4 family, which I did last time. So, 0 pi over 6, actually it's the pi over 6 family, I should have said, pi over 3, and then pi over 2, and then that's uh, 2 pi over 3, and then 5 pi over 6, and then pi, and then we'll come back and do some more, I'll squeeze it in right here, uh, after I have some place to work. Uh, we'll we'll figure out a place to put the rest of those. For now, let's plug in zero. So we get r is three plus two cosine of zero. So that's three plus two, which is five, because cosine of zero is one. So I'm out here at one, two, three, four, five. There's my starting point. All right. If I go to pi over six, that's r is equal to three plus two times cosine of pi over 6, which cosine of pi over 6 we know to be square root of 3 over 2. So that's going to give me 3 plus the square root of 3 over 2 times 2, which is square root of 3, which is approximately 4.7. So a little bit in from 5, right about there. Oh, don't do that. One note. Okay. 
Now let's do pi over 3. So that's going to be r is equal to 3 plus 2 times cosine of pi over 3. Cosine of pi over 3 is a half, so that's 3 plus 2 times a half is 1. So I end up with 4. Right up, oh, nope, that's pi over 4. So I end up at a 4 here. That's a 4 out in that direction. Now I'm going to do pi over 2. So r is 3 plus 2 cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. So I end up with, at just 3 when I'm straight up. Pi over 2 pi over 3 is actually, um, yeah, what is that? Negative 2 pi, that's a negative 1 half. So we're going to end up with r is equal to 3 plus 2 times a negative 1 half, which is 3 minus 1 or 2. If I do r is uh, 3 plus 2 cosine of 5 pi over 6. That's a negative square root of 3 over 2. So this would be 3 minus the square root of 3, which is approximately 1.3. Since square root of 3 is about 1.7. So 1.3 is about here. And then once we get to pi, it's going to be 3 plus 2 times cosine of pi, which is a negative 1, so 3 minus 2, which is 1. So this ends up looking like this shape here. Now what happens is this actually ends up repeating. So like I said, I'm going to be a little bit... Uh, uh, I'm going to wave my magical mathematical wand here and say what's going to happen is as I start moving along the other direction. So as, as I start getting to, for example, um, 7 pi over 6, that's going to give me the same thing in this equation as 5 pi over 6. This is going to give me, if I go to um, 4 pi over 3, that's the same thing as 2 pi over 3 for cosine. All right, it repeats itself going back up. All right, and this is going to be the same thing for 3 pi over 2. This is going to be the same thing for 5 pi over 3. And this is going to be the same thing for 7 pi over, not 7 pi, 11 pi over 6. And this will be the same thing for 2 pi. So it repeats itself going back up. So I end up at a 1.3 here. I end up at a 2 here. I end up at a 3 here, I end up at a 4 here, and a 4.7 here, which gives me a repeat of this shape, much like the cardioid we saw last time. In fact, it is a cardioid, only it's turned on its side. It reaches this little cusp right here at this point, but it's this thing that comes in, bounces there, and comes back out. So you again, let me emphasize the fact that this, this is a tedious process and there's no good reason to not utilize technology to do all of this once you make sure that you understand how to find the trig function values for these things and that you have an understanding of what's happening as I move around this circle that I'm sweeping out a curve right and I have a distance from the origin at each given theta which produces a polar shaped curve and by polar shape, I just mean that it's it's swept out around this polar coordinate system. Let's utilize technology then to graph these instead of doing each point by hand. A very powerful resource that's available to free for free to any internet user is a tool called Wolfram Alpha. Wolfram Alpha is like a search engine, only they market themselves or call themselves a computational knowledge engine, which means they can do computations for you, much like if you typed in a Google search, you would find information about um, topics that have been posted on the internet. With Wolfram Alpha, you can do computations, so it can actually calculate things for you, but it also finds data so that if you want to know information that has been compiled in um, resources like the 
you know, Department of Labor statistics, the Census Bureau, um, or just almanac data, weather data. You can go do all kinds of powerful searches in Wolfram Alpha. I encourage you to go and take a look at WolframAlpha.com and look at some of the um, sample um, searches that they have available right there on their main page. What we are going to do is simply plot these polar equations, and all you have to do at Wolfram Alpha is type in the equation and it will produce a plot for you that you can then draw, recreate, or just reference in your work as you do your homework. All right, so let's jump over to WolframAlpha.com. We want to graph R is equal to 1 plus 2 cosine theta. So I'm going to plug that in. I'm going to just type in R equals 1 plus 2 cosine. And since I don't have a theta on my keyboard, I'm just going to spell it out, theta. And that's what I'm going to type into my browser. So here, uh, so here I am at WolframAlpha.com. I'm going to click right here in my search window. I'm going to type R equals 1 plus 2 cosine of theta and hit enter. And it's going to calculate away. It's going to give me some information that pulls up here on the screen as I scroll down. Notice how it has produced a graph for me in polar coordinates. It says polar plot because that's exactly what I wanted. I mean, that's exactly what it was able to do for me. The other thing is it does it also produces a plot in uh, rectangular coordinates, assuming R and theta were rectangular, which is not true, and a bunch of other stuff that we don't even want to reference at this point, which we will um, simply restrict ourselves and look at. This is what the graph looks like, right? So if I wanted this in my notes, I could just uh, copy this thing. Um, so there's some features in here where you can customize your image. I'm not going to do all that. I just wanted a copy of it, so I'm going to right-click on the picture. Oh, going to let me do that. Uh, so like I said, what you want to do is copy the image and well you don't have to do this necessarily I'm just gonna do it so that I can put it back here in my notes you could redraw this by hand or you can for example in your homework a lot of them will be multiple choice you'll be able to identify which graph it is so over here I'm just gonna control V and there's my graph alright so that's all there was to it let's uh let's go take a look at Another example. In this example, we want to find the graph of r is equal to 2 cosine of 2 theta. So I'm going to pop back over into Wolfram Alpha and see what we get. So r is equal to 2 times cosine of 2 times theta, just to make it a little bit readable. I'll put some spaces in there, but they don't affect the output. Hit enter, or click the equal sign. And like I said, you can get some fairly interesting looking shapes. They almost turn into spiral graph types of shapes by different variations on the polar equation. So that's what the polar plot looks like. So I'm going to copy that. and go paste it back into my notes. And there we've got it. Move that around just a little bit. There we go. Our next example is r squared is equal to 4 sine of 2 theta. To type this in, um, we simply need to know that um, r squared would be typed in as r and then the little caret symbol that's above your 6, so shift 6. r squared is equal to 4 cosine of 2 theta. Uh, correction, make that uh, 4 sine of 2 theta. Enter. Okay. 
there we have our polar plot. And so there's our graph in our notes, r squared equals 4 sine of 2 theta. For our last example, I wanted to give you one that was a little bit uh, tricky to, to type in just so that you were aware of how to type this into Wolfram Alpha. Uh, for this particular equation, we have our number e, Euler's constant, um, as a base in an exponential. So r is equal to e, this is like e raised to theta divided by 5. All right, now Wolfram will know what this E is right here, so it will calculate this appropriately. Let's go plug in this expression into Wolfram Alpha. All right, so typing this in, we have R is equal to E raised to the, type in the word theta, divided by 5. Enter. So for theta going from negative 10 to positive 10, we actually get this spiral, which is called a logarithmic spiral, coming out from the origin. So here's that shape. The logarithmic spiral is the graph of r is equal to e raised to the theta over 5. So in this section, again, in this lecture, you've covered how to graph these things by intuition, by converting to rectangular coordinate systems, um, also to graph them by hand using points, and then the, uh, the benefit of technology we now able to use, we are now able to use technology to graph these polar plots for us directly through Wolfram Alpha.